Russian armed forces systematically use torture in occupied areas of Ukraine. Russian armed forces and associated groups systematically use torture in occupied areas of Ukraine, pointing to a deliberate policy, a United Nations expert said. The UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Alice Jill Edwards, said she had drawn that conclusion following a visit to war-torn Ukraine in September. The volume of credible allegations of torture and other forms of cruel, inhuman or humiliating treatment or punishment torture is an element of Russia's war policy, she told the UN Human Rights Council. These grievous crimes appear to be neither random nor incidental. Speaking to reporters, Edwards said Ukrainian prosecutors had told her there were around 103,000 open cases related to war crimes and crimes against humanity, of which 90% were registered as torture cases. Edwards, who said she had personally examined dozens of cases involving alleged abuse by Russian forces and their allies, said there was clearly an intent and purpose to carry out the torture that cannot be described away as aberrant or ad hoc behavior. In a report following her visit, Edwards found that torture has been carried out in an organized and systematic manner, with the same practices allegedly carried out across different occupied regions. Her findings, she told the council, point to direct authorization and a deliberate policy. Edwards and other special rapporteurs are independent rights experts who are appointed by the UN Human Rights Council but do not speak on behalf of the UN. She reiterated a plea for Moscow to issue a strong and unequivocal directive that torture is never permissible and that it will be punished. Edwards, who has been denied access to Russia, also urged the country to open investigations into these allegations and allow international monitors into all places of deprivation of liberty and to observe criminal proceedings. Turning to the conditions Russian prisoners of war face in Ukrainian custody, she said, sincere efforts were being made by the Ukrainian authorities to treat prisoners of war respectfully. U.S. Embassy warns of imminent attack in Russia. Diplomats urged American citizens to avoid gatherings. The U.S. Embassy in Moscow has warned that extremists are plotting to carry out attacks in the Russian capital within the next few days. The embassy is monitoring reports that extremists have imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow to include concerts and U.S. citizens should be advised to avoid large gatherings over the next 48 hours, the diplomatic mission said in a statement on its website. It urged Americans to stay vigilant and monitor local media for updates. The embassy did not provide any additional details about the alert. The alert was issued amid the ongoing tensions between Moscow and Washington. On February the 7th, the Russian Foreign Ministry summoned American Ambassador Lynn Tracy, demanding that the embassy cut all ties with three US-funded NGOs whose work was recently banned in Russia. The Foreign Ministry further threatened to expel any US embassy employees who will attempt to interfere in the domestic affairs of the Russian Federation, including subversive campaigns and misinformation in the context of the conflict in Ukraine and the upcoming presidential elections in Russia. Ambassador Tracy was issued a formal note which demanded that Washington's embassy cut all ties with these outlawed groups. Among other things, its website and social media should remove all mentions of the three. Moscow will act to prevent any subversive actions and dissemination of disinformation, up to and including declaring embassy staff persona non grata should they violate the Russian law, the statement stressed. An organization that is deemed undesirable in Russia has many of its rights suspended. It may not establish offices in the country or use its financial system and can't publish anything under its name. Individuals and entities are banned from doing any business with such groups in any Russian jurisdiction. The list of undesirable organizations is kept by the Justice Ministry. The current version on its website has 146 entries and was last updated in mid-February. China prepares for open war with Taiwan, Taipei's defense ministry reveals Beijing's plan. China has increased military pressure on Taiwan in the so-called Grey Zone. Beijing saturates the areas around the island with balloons, drones and civilian ships. The Chinese are trying to exhaust the enemy before starting an open war. 
According to Reuters, citing a report by the Ministry of Defense of Taiwan, China is trying to exhaust the enemy without resorting to an open military confrontation. The document reads that the China uses the tactics of a multi-front saturated grey zone to deplete Taiwan, which includes increased patrolling with vessels and aircraft. China has attempted to increase the burden on our naval and air forces and conceal the existence of a median line in the strait, the report reads. It's about the situation on the unofficial border between China and Taiwan. Chinese troops have regularly crossed it in recent years. China also uses research and military vessels disguising military activities as civilian ones. Taiwan's defense ministry said it is working on measures aimed at preserving its troops in case of war, increasing the resilience of infrastructure and conducting exercises to ensure the survival of Taiwanese troops in a protracted conflict. In addition, the Taipei military department is stockpiling weapons and fuel to withstand a long war with China. The ministry noted that it is analyzing and drawing lessons from Russia's war against Ukraine and the military actions of Israel and Hamas. Taiwan's Ministry of Defense believes that China will try to seize Taiwan to prevent external interference quickly. Taipei is trying to disperse its command systems and introduce more long-range and mobile weapons and artificial intelligence. The island also strengthens ties with democratic allies, including the U.S.